for afterwards. I'm pretty sure you have some questions. Okay, so now I would like to introduce our next speaker. It's Christopher Drevel. He is a PhD at the Technical University in Berlin. His PhD project is in tissue engineering to develop a kidney equivalent together with the company Tissues in Berlin. And he will give us an overview of the technology that has been developed at Tissues. And during his diploma thesis, he was working on infection biology. And I would say the stage is yours, Christopher. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Um, yes, yeah, so I would like to present you um, an overview about our multi-organ chip platform or platforms because there are several now. And I would like to start with the question why we actually think that it is a good idea to develop such multi-organ chip platforms and technologies. And we want to help um, to solve the substance testing dilemma. So what do I mean with that? I mean, every substance, be it a new drug, a new chemical, a new nanoparticle, has to be tested for safety and in the case of drugs for efficacy before going into humans. And so we have the preclinical uh, testing phase, and we have two preclinical model groups which both have <coughs> severe drawbacks. So on the one hand, we have the animal models. These models are systemic, so we have all the same organs as in the human body. They're connected by blood circulation, and we have or organ crosstalk, but they are not human, of course. And this poses a severe problem and is one of the major causes why you have very high attrition rates and drug development of over 90%, as we also heard in a talk yesterday. And on the other hand, we have the human 2D and 3D cell culture models, which are human, maybe even primary derived, but they're not systemic. So usually we don't have organs, we d usually don't even have tissues, but single cell types that are not interconnected, they don't communicate, we have no crosstalk. And now we want to take basically the best of these both words, combine that into a human on a chip system. So have human 3D cell culture models for the different organs, have them in, in a microfluidic system connected so we can actually observe things like organ crosstalk, first pass effects, etc. So what does our platform look like? So as I said, we have different ones and the one which we used most so far is called um, the two organ chip. And this is a small video to introduce this platform, how it is built up. So we have several parts. There's an optional heating support and the actual chip up here is made of three layers. We have a standard microscopic glass slide, PDMS layer with channels and culture um, compartments, and an adapter plate made of uh, polycarbonate. And you see here one culture uh, circuit, and you can introduce, for example, your liver organoids or any other cell culture model that fits in the, in the 96 well. You can use barrier models like skin or intestinal models and transfer system. Fill it with medium of your, your need and your choice, and then apply a substance like intravenously, so into the medium directly, or you have topical application, or for example, like or mimicking oral application on an intestinal model. And we have an on-chip micropump, so we have here three membranes that are pushed up and down by pressurized air, and they are driving the medium around in a circuit, so the, uh, the medium is exchanged. And this on-chip pump allows that we have a quite low medium volume in there. We have no external pump, no external reservoirs, and a more physiological fluid to tissue ratio than in many other um, organ on a chip systems. And so coming to the biology part, so what kind of si um, models did we actually culture to now? So here's a list. It's not even complete. Um, so we have different uh, models of liver, skin. So here's kidney, my own project. And um, these are very different kinds of models. So basically, we had biopsies. We had um, IPS-derived models, we had um, um, primary-derived models, we had um, cell line-based models. So basically anything that you have in the static culture you can put into this, um, into this platform, be it 2 or 3D. And um, so that is really the beauty of the system. So you can really take any model and just combine them in any way you want and put two of them together. So for example, here, skin and liver, which was one of the first proof-of-concept studies we did. And we did several different co-cultures so far, so here's an overview of that and just a few examples. So I cannot go into detail, so um, if you want to you know, more, more about the different experiments, I refer you to um, the references given here. I just want to give one short example, which was one of the first experiments where we have a liver skin co-culture and applied a substance called troglitazone. Troglitazone was an anti-diabetic drug that was removed from the market because um, in many patients, liver toxicity was observed. And, but this was not observed in the preclinical studies. So, and 
what we actually tried, so we applied the substance daily, and we could see actually the liver toxicity in the system and the CYP3A4 induction by the substance, as was observed in the human patients. Another thing, maybe here, for example, we applied sensitizers to a skin, so the sensitizers uh, went through the skin, uh, penetrated, and then um, had contact with dendritic cells in the other compartment and caused an activation um, in the dendritic cells, which is a model for skin sensitization. So the next step then, we have organ models, we have them in, in technical channels, but what the human body has is a real vasculature network, and so we want in the end to also have a vasculature-like network combining our organ models. And the first step that is pretty well established in our lab by now is to cover all surfaces of the channel by human primary endothelial cells, and you see in this timeless video how nicely these cells proliferate, cover all the surfaces there so that no foreign surfaces is exposed to the, to the medium. And then they also elongate in the direction of the flow, which goes from, from top to bottom here, which they also do in the human uh, vasculature. Okay, but these are big vessels. So this channel is about 100 micrometer, micrometer wide, so we have like scale of big uh, arterioles. What about the capillary network? We already heard um, something about that in the, in the last talks, and we try similar things, so we want to have like a vascular bed that can um, vascularize our organ models. We are not there yet, but at the moment we pursue two different approaches, and one is more engineering-based, so we have um, like a hydrogel, um, which is molded or 3D printed in um, one of the culture compartments, so you can see here fluorescent beads going through these microchannels, and the idea is to seed the channel walls here as well with endothelial cells, and if you have a biodegradable the gel that the, they can sprout out and sprout on an organ model on top of that. The other is more biology inspired and is very similar to the one which we just saw before. So we have fibrin gel with endothelial cells and um, adipose derived stem cells and we see this nice uh, self-assembly of a capillary network. Again here we hope that if we integrate an organ model here that it can get vascularized and perfused. So so far, I showed you experiments with our like, standard platform, the two organ chip, but two organs is, of course, not enough. So we need more organs. And um, the next step for us was the four organ chip, and we published the proof of principle study last year. And the organs we chose were actually chosen in a way that we can take the so called ADMET profile of a given substance. So ADMET is here, like, written out. So you have the adsorption by an intestinal barrier. Um, you can have the distribution in the blood surrogate circuit. The substance reaches the liver for metabolism, can be excreted by kidney tubular cells on a membrane into the second circuit, and we have toxicity for all these organs and a uh, fourth organ of choice, which can be reused skin, but it could be any other organ like neurospheres or something like that. And these organs were cultured for 24, uh, eight days um, in a co-culture, and we see here um, histology stainings of the organs after these four weeks of culture. So this was a primary-based inte small intestinal model distributed by the company Matek. We have the liver spheroids made up of HEPA-RG, hepatocytes in green and primary stellate cells in red. Um, we have skin biopsies, um, which still shows some um, epidermal layer um, integrity and um, the um, mentioned uh, kidney proximal tubular cells on the membrane. And we looked at barrier function and stability of the model over this time course. So we had in this experiment actually three different media. So one was above the intestinal um, barrier, so in the intestinal lumen. And the second medium was in the blood surrogate circuit. And the third medium was in the excretory circuit. And all of this, these media had different glucose concentration at the start. And so we measured glucose concentration after the culture, and we could still see like a stable difference in the glucose concentrations of these media, so the barrier function of these cells is intact over the whole time of the experiment. And what was also very nice to see, so we analyzed via qPCR marker expression of key markers of the different uh, cell models, and we saw from basically the vast majority of the markers a stable expression over the whole time course of the 28 days, which was extremely nice to see. And yeah, so we had four organs on a chip for a month, and where to go from there? So the next step we want to achieve is to actually have this model that will enable a human on a chip. So having more than 10 organs, all the relevant organs for a real 
um, safety and efficacy, efficacy, efficacy testing. I'm sorry. Um, so here's the timeline. So we published the first proof of principle for the two organ chip in 2012. Last year, the four organ chip, and we want to have a first prototype of this platform ready in the end of 2017. And so to give you a first like glimpse, okay, what could this look like? So you see here. Um, first trial, so we have a uh, very intricate channel structure with the different organ compartments. Already, so the microfluidic works, so you see it's filled with a two stripe and blue solution. This is not what it will look like in the end. There will be lots of redesigns, especially of the culture compartments for, for every organ, but so that you have an idea, okay, what could this look like? Actually, it would still have like the size of a, of a, a bit smaller than a smartphone. And with that, I would like to come to an end. So um, here's Uwe Marx, um, the founder of Tissues, the head of the company. You can see here our team at uh, not micro, but actually very macrofluidic exercise at our group outing. And um, I would like to thank all of our cooperation partners and the funding agencies for their support, and I would like to thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, Christopher, for this overview of multi-organ chips. We still keep the questions for after the fifth presentation. Now we continue with our fourth presentation. Um, it's uh, Simon Ströb.